Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, and I'm here today at the James D. Julia Auction House up in Fairfield, Maine, taking a look at some of the guns that they are selling in their Spring of 2017 auction. The one we have here today is a really interesting piece, because you really... it looks weird, and it's mechanically interesting, but then the more you dig into the history behind it, the more interesting it gets. But it's still a one-off, totally custom pistol I would be willing to wager different from anything you've seen before. So it looks like a Luger. It is, in fact, a Luger, or it started as a Luger, but it has a 1911 hammer on it. That's something very different. Now, on the top of the action here, we see a little inscription that says, Remodeled by A. W. Peterson and Son, Denver. So what makes this Luger really interesting to me is not just that it's mechanically really strange and unusual, but almost as importantly that it transcends two widely separated fields of the firearms community. So on the one hand you have Luger collectors, who have almost certainly never heard of Axel Peterson. And on the other hand you have small bore rifle collectors, who probably don't know anything about Lugers. Doing some research into Axel Peterson will reveal that he was one of the four premier gunsmiths in the Denver, Colorado area uh, in the late 1800s and early 1900s. In fact, all the way through World War II. He was a Swedish immigrant. He started uh, a gunsmithing business in Denver in 1886, and became very well renowned. And this is an era kind of unlike most gunsmithing today. You know, today you think of a gunsmith, that's the guy who works in the back room of a gun shop, and you know, if you manage to get a cartridge stuck in the gun, or you can't figure out how to get the gun back together after you disassemble it, or you just don't feel like cleaning it yourself. You take it to the gun shop and you have their smith take care of that problem for you. Well, we still have gunsmiths of the old model today, but they're kind of few and far between. A gunsmith like Axel Peterson built a gun, completely from scratch. He was particularly known for his barrels. Not fitting barrels, but making barrels. He had his own rifling machines, and he manufactured barrels from pieces of steel bar stock. Uh, in the same vein as guys like Henry Pope. If you wanted an accurate rifle, you couldn't just go out and buy an off-the-shelf barrel so much. Not, not in the late 1800s. You needed to find a true gunsmith, a practitioner of the art of firearms manufacture, someone who could make that barrel for you. And the guys who were able to do it well, and make consistent, accurate barrels, became very highly renowned. And Axel Peterson was one of them. In 1904 he partnered up with another very talented gunsmith by the name of George Shoyan, um, and they worked together until Shoyan's death in 1916, at which point Peterson's son, Roy, joined him in the business, at which point it would have become A. W. Peterson and Son. And together they would run that business until 1947, when Roy unfortunately passed away. At that point the shop was actually purchased and moved to Florida, where it remains today, although not quite doing the same thing that it used to. Having a Luger marked A. W. Peterson is really quite the unusual thing. Peterson was probably best known for his 22 caliber small bore rifles, as the, the, the predominant shooting, popular shooting sport transitioned from Schutzen in the late 1800s to small bore into the 1920s. That's where some of these guys like, uh, like Peterson really made their names. So this is a 22 caliber target conversion of a Luger, and done really quite differently. So let's take a closer look at this. This clearly began its life as a Luger. It's a 1906 Luger, has coil spring, uh, a coil mainspring. But beyond that, no idea when it was manufactured. Now what has been done to it is all sorts of stuff. So right off the bat you can see that there is a 1911 hammer which has been cludged into the back here. The entire toggle action, toggle mechanism, has been removed. So we just have the original Luger frame with a number of screws added into it. And what you do to open this is actually push this little button, there we go. That will cam the barrel section slightly forward, and then the barrel section lifts up. And we have right here a 22 caliber chamber and an extractor right there that will kick the empty case out. This is very much a single shot pistol. So in order to load this you would manually put a cartridge in the chamber. You actually want to push the extractor all the way back out. And then this drops down into position here, and then you bring this lever back up, and it locks in position. Now you're ready to cock the hammer. It's single action only, there's no safety on this. It is very much 
a purely uh, purely a target pistol, and then it has a really nice crisp single action trigger pull. I'm not going to drop the hammer because it is rim fire, and I don't want to ding up the chamber there. But the front sight has been replaced with this nice tall squared off post. You can see that there is a barrel liner added, so that it is a 22 caliber uh, barrel. The rear sight has also been replaced here with a nice narrow notch, like so. And if you look closely, you can see that there is a slot in that screw. It is a windage adjustable rear sight. So there is a magazine in this pistol, but if I take that out, you can see that it is heavily cut away and non-functional. Of course, it's a single shot pistol, there's no need for the magazine, it's just there so you don't have an empty hole in the bottom of the gun. Now I'm going to go ahead and take the upper assembly off, and I'm going to take the grip panel off, because one of the interesting bits here is the trigger assembly. There is nothing at all left of the original Luger trigger. Alright, I've taken out the retaining screw in the cross pin here, so now I can take this locking piece out. I have to pull the lever all the way up. So this is the bar that locks the upper assembly in place, so now I can take that out. The barrel assembly is stamped A.W. Peterson, Denver, Colorado, again on the inside. And then you can see how this has been retrofitted into what was originally the barrel assembly of the Luger. So the center bit has been added and then fixed in place. We've got our sliding extractor right there. Now normally the way a Luger trigger works is that you push, when you push the trigger back, there's a little piece here that pushes up into the, assemb into the slide, which then triggers a sear which comes to the back and releases the striker. On this, striker is gone, because it's not in the upper assembly anymore. There's nothing back here, and in fact parts of the trigger have been cut away. What we have instead is this connecting bar, which goes from the trigger, up here, all the way back to the sear. There's a, a much more typical single action sear assembly back here. And what the trigger does now is literally push this bar back just a fraction of an inch. So when I cock the hammer, you can see that this bar goes just a tiny bit forward. There's the pistol uncocked and cocked. Do that one more time so you can see it. Uncocked, and cocked. I mean, it's just a, a hair's distance right there. And that's all the travel that you have to actually fire the pistol. So that bar comes back to here. One of the clever bits is that the hammer is actually powered by the original mainspring of the gun. So you can see when I move the hammer, we're putting tension, or compression, on this mainspring. That was originally designed to be the recoil spring of the gun, but uh, Peterson retrofitted it, or repurposed it, to use it as the hammer spring. That's pretty clever. Then there is a firing pin right here that just goes straight through this block and comes out in the front right there to fire the cartridge. Why exactly he had this really overly complicated locking mechanism? I don't know. It seems like there must be a lot of simpler ways to do that. but. I would kind of presume that a guy like Peterson probably has his own ideas on how things ought to be done, and there was probably some fairly esoteric, but maybe legitimate reason to make it this complicated. Or maybe it was just a fun project of his. So there you have it, a really cool combination of mechanical and historical, and in some ways sociological. Seeing the transition between different styles of shooting sports being popular is almost as interesting to me as all the other aspects of firearms manufacture and history. And in some ways there are sporting guns like this that are just as interesting as any military firearm out there. In fact, I bet you this thing shoots as well today as it did 100 years ago? It's hard to say exactly when this was manufactured. It would have been sometime after 1916 and before 1947, but beyond that there's really no way to tell. Um, what there aren't, I wasn't able to find any serial numbers on the Luger that might uh, restrict its date of manufacture and give us some hint. But I bet you this thing shoots shoots pretty darn well today, and it would be a really cool 
very unique piece for anyone's firearms collection. Whether you're into small bore rifles and you want an interesting tie-in to pistol shooting, or if you're into pistols and you want a cool tie-in to old school, true gunsmithing practitioners, it's a really neat gun. And of course, if you're a gunsmith yourself and you want to duplicate this sort of conversion, well, good luck to you. I don't know that there's a more complicated way you could have made a 22 target pistol out of a Luger than what Peterson did here. At any rate, it is of course for sale, because it's here at the auction house. If you take a look at the description text below, you'll find a link to Julia's catalog page on this piece. You can take a look at their pictures and description, and if you decide you just can't live without it, you can place a bid right there through their website. Thanks for watching.